Hey guys, this is Patrick from SDH. Today, I am up in Calgary in Alberta, Canada because Cool IT Systems shipped me up here so we can go take a look at their liquid cooling lab. We're gonna take a tour of this lab, see how all of the really cool fittings, cold plates, and all the CDUs, everything gets put together. I'm super excited to get to show you this because this is the kind of stuff that is gonna be super important over the next couple of years as TDPs on server CPUs and accelerators rise. You're gonna to need to go liquid cooling and this is where that magic is gonna happen. Twenty years ago, we started Cool IT Systems, primarily working with desktop computers. As we moved forward, we started working in the server industry and supplying cooling systems for very large vendors. And here at the Liquid Lab, we would like to give you a background tour of what happens at our facility. So you may have seen recently that we did a video where I specifically built a Gigabyte H262 ZL0 and we actually hooked it up to an entire system just so you could see how that whole flow works because there are certainly a lot more components in a liquid cooled server versus an air cooled server. And we also showed not just how to go build a server with all of those components, but we showed how to actually hook that up to a rack manifold. We then hooked it up to a CDU and we showed how the entire flow of liquid flows through the system, both I guess the loop that goes into the server, but then also the one that works through the facilities. It's a super cool demo and you should totally go check that video out to just kind of get a good sense of how this whole thing works. In the end, we ended up having a benchtop demo where we basically showed that we had the flow rate from a garden hose and that flow rate from the garden hose was basically able to cool enough using the Cool IT Systems CHX80 CDU. It was able to cool enough for like 20 thousand AMD Epic 7003 Milan cores. That's absolutely wild. Now, some people are gonna see that video and then they're gonna say, hey, great that you can do that, but I'm really kind of nervous about putting liquid cooling into my environment, right? Because there are certain things that can happen that would be not good. And well, how do I know that it's safe to go and deploy? And that is exactly what this Liquid Lab is here to do. It's really to go do all that integration, do that testing, do that prototyping. So that way, if you're a customer and you have a data center and you wanna know like, hey, is, is this safe to deploy? Well, the part of, the big part of that is really just going and testing things and getting that, you know, knowing how things respond to different environments, how they respond to different combinations and being able to go do that testing to assure customers that it's actually safe to go deploy in data centers. And so while we were doing that, Gigabyte video, I was looking around, I was like, hey, you know, there's actually a good story here in terms of showing that these things are actually engineered systems. They're not just people randomly cutting tubes and throwing things together. Like there's actually a process behind it. And that process is what actually makes these systems reliable. And so that's kind of how this idea of touring the liquid lab came about. So in this video, I'm really excited because what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna go all the way from the CNC machines that create some of these parts to see how they're integrated into, you know, cooling blocks, but then also we're gonna see how they get integrated all the way into big systems. And for our lab tour guide today, we have Sergey. Sergey, could you introduce yourself? Sure, hi, my name is Sergey. Uh, I am the innovation lab manager of Coolity Systems. And I'm gonna be talking today about different types of loops, different types of destructive and non-destructive testing that we do to make sure these systems are reliable and will go through the long cycle in the field. And just to give STH readers some idea, you may have actually seen something that's on this table on the STH main site previously. Specifically, looking at this in front of me, what we actually have is a Cray supercomputer node using Cool IT Systems cooling. And this is gonna be the node that is gonna go and power many of the US's first exascale supercomputer. So the thought is, we're gonna go see how all this is made, but first we need to go machine some parts. So let's go get over to the CNC machine. Okay, so the first part in any testing process is you need something to test. And so, Sergey, what are these machines behind us and what do they do? So basically we have a CNC and scaving machines that allow our engineers to quickly turn the design into the physical item that goes into the assembly area and further into the testing. At Liquid Lab, we have a variety of capabilities. So uh, for prototyping, we have CNC, skiving machine and, and uh, 3D printers, uh, along with some other tools and equipment that we have. So this helps our engineers to do iterations of their design much faster than before. And so let's go take a look at that assembly area right now. 
Now, as we get to this assembly area, I just want to point out the fact that these liquid cooling systems do have a ton. I mean, there's absolutely way more parts than an air cooled system. If you think about a typical air cooled system, you basically have a heat sink, you put the heat sink onto a chip, and then you maybe have an air shroud that goes around a collection of heat sinks, and then you have a fan that basically pushes air through. But I mean, there's really not that much going on there in terms of different components. On the liquid side, there are a ton of things because you don't just exhaust air into the rear of the system or liquid into the back of, of the chassis or something like that, you actually have to tube it out and into the CDUs and rack manifolds and all that kind of stuff. So not only does the testing and innovation have to happen at the individual component level, but it also needs to happen in larger assemblies. And that's what we're gonna keep taking a look at as we continue with this tour. Okay, so now that we've seen all the really cool things that happen over at the CNC machine, well, Sergey, what, tell me about what happens here. So here, it's one of the most exciting parts of the Innovation Lab. That's why our engineers and technicians, uh, as part of the rapid prototyping cycle, they assemble components from the CNC, from the skiving machine, and third-party vendors, because they are too complex to get it done on one machine. They assemble them into the first iteration of the cooling loops that we will be testing and making sure they are reliable and they perform within the spec. Okay, so once we have all these assemblies, the next step is we have to go test them to make sure that they perform well, they're reliable. And so let's go over to see how these things get tested. So after assembly, we go to this part, which is definitely a lot noisier, but this is where all the testing happens to ensure that the prototypes are to see how the prototypes actually work. Isn't that right? Yeah, so basically, and this is why we have all these temperature chambers behind us. We test the prototypes up to the extreme and even beyond that, including high and low temperatures, to make sure that these units will maintain the structural integrity in any conditions and will be safe to deploy in the data centers. And by the way, these machines that are behind us were super loud. We couldn't actually show you some of the things that were in there because they're like kind of prototype next gen things that we weren't allowed to show for, you know, both Cool IT and also their customers. So we couldn't actually show what was going on in a lot of these systems. But on the flip side, I can just tell you that they were definitely testing a ton of different types of components. And really the goal wasn't just to go and do like, hey, here's what it looks like when you're in a data center, right? The idea is really you're doing things like rapid heat cycling. And the idea is really to go not just to a spec, but also to go all the way to the point of failure to figure out where and when things will fail so that way next generation iterations of you know design can actually go and address those so you get a more reliable product and there are a ton of these chambers specifically they're all working with multiple different systems just to be able to go and figure that kind of information out and so after the prototypes are tested the next thing we have to do is go actually integrate them into larger systems and so that's the other side of the lab let's go over there the next step after everything's been tested at the component levels, it needs to go get stress tested and tested together. And that's really what this integration area is, right? Yeah, so basically what we want to, to do here is to make sure that all the components that will be deployed in the customer data center are compatible between each other. So here we have the primary fluid network that basically a water that goes into the data center. And then we have a CDU and all other components on the rack level connected between each other through the secondary fluid network. So bringing this back to that first video we did, I mean, we had the server with the passive cooling loop in that server on, on the different AMD Epic CPUs. And then we basically had the tubing that would go to the rack manifold, which is in the center of the table. And then we went to the CDU and we explained all the different parts of the CDU, including things like the pumps. We showed the reservoir, we showed the three-way valve, the monitoring solutions and the heat exchanger. But each of these assemblies then needs to also be tested at a higher level with different combinations. And just an example there, a lot of the server vendors are actually using different fittings on the backs of their systems. So this is not just a theoretical exercise. I mean, this is something that goes on and you have to actually test all of this stuff together to make sure that it's reliable. And that's really what this station does. And by the way, it's not just some of the physical stuff that we're really seeing in terms of all these hoses and fittings and manifolds, CDUs, all that. There's also just bits like the liquid that's used. The liquid that's in some of these loops is actually treated and has things for, you know, antimicrobial, anti-corrosion, all those types of things. And so those additives can also vary based on the system and vendor, and they can work differently depending on what you have in your loop because they can interact with different components differently. And so you have to go test all of this stuff together. And so that's why this little station here is really important. So now that we've tested everything in the fluid compatibility area, the next step is to take everything to the data center simulator and try it out there. 
Containers have been used in the data center industry for a long time to go create modular data centers. And that's basically what we have behind us in the data center simulator, isn't that right? Yeah, so basically inside the shipping containers, we have the completely controlled environment, including the high and cold aisle, uh, primary fluid networks, the secondary fluid networks, and it's absolutely adjustable. So we can precisely mimic the customer environment on site. Servers and liquid cooling are not just deployed in the Silicon Valley where you basically have low temperature variation, you have low humidity, you're at sea level. I mean, that is a pretty easy use case and it's a pretty standard use case. But frankly, these systems are being deployed all over the world. If you're someone deploying servers, you want to be able to use the same servers in all of your different locations. And so if that's the case, you may have different facility water. You may have some different you know, switches or routers or something that you have to use in certain areas. There are all kinds of different components that you may have in different racks, different you know heat environments, humidity, all that kind of stuff. So there's just so much that can be different that that's really why you need to go do this level of testing. Now, we're not allowed to actually show you what's in there because there's a demo in there that we're not allowed to film. But instead, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go head over and look at what the evolution of the CDU, or cooling distribution units, looks like. Over there, we have them all set up from like old versions to new versions. And let's take a look at like what all of this prototyping, what it leads to in terms of innovation. So let's get to it. So something I did want to show is really why all of this testing is important because it's something I didn't know before I walked in the door. If you go look at this unit over here, this is a older, I mean, it's like 10 plus years old. It's a 40 kilowatt 2U CDU. And this thing you can definitely tell is a lot older. It's a lot simpler, but at the same time, it shows you all the major CDU components. Specifically, you can see that we have the heat exchanger here. We have a reservoir, we have pumps, we have our control, we have some sensors and pipes. All the components that we see in a modern CDU are also there, but everything's a lot simpler. When we go to this unit over here, what you're gonna see is everything is a lot more complex. Everything's bigger, there's more redundancy, there's more sensors. And so as a result of that, the liquid cooling lab, I mean, you really have to go test this a lot to be able to go from something that's relatively simple like this to the newer models, right? So in general, it takes dozens of iterations. It takes dozens of tests to make sure that all the components are compatible and perform at the highest level to make sure that the system as general is the highest efficiency and the most reliable possible. So now that we've seen these CDs and talked a little bit about how much goes into them, let's go look at a big one because I think that's really cool. While we were walking through the liquid lab, what I saw was something that was super cool that we didn't cover over on the table, but I wanted to show you. And that is specifically what it looks like when these things scale up into the megawatt class of cooling. And that's specifically what we have behind us here. This thing looks absolutely awesome. And can you kind of tell us a little bit about how this is actually just a scaled up version of what we saw previously? So in general, we're talking about the same cooling distribution unit, the same CDU that you saw there but the story evolved into the gigantic sizes. It has absolutely the same components. It has the redundant pump, it has a control electronics, expansion tanks, heat exchanger, but everything else is just massively giant. It takes a lot of efforts and time to get that working together, but when it does, we're talking about megawatt scale. Today we are seeing servers that are, are really surpassing six kilowatt. Uh, what this, this means for liquid cooling solution is that you're gonna have more flow rate coming you're gonna have a more pressure drop happening throughout the server. So you're gonna have a need more pressure coming from the CDUs or coolant distribution units to support these many racks, providing these uh, processing and a look at cooling solutions there. So since we recorded this video, we actually saw the release of the new H100 NVIDIA GPUs. And this is really kind of like that first of that next generation of GPUs. And NVIDIA said that Hopper can go up to 700 watts. And it's gonna be very common that we're actually gonna see GPUs go from 500 watts to 700 watts, and the next generations are gonna climb from there. And so as these components get hotter, there's a number of challenges. Not only do you have to just remove that much more heat, but you also have to do things like you actually have to keep a lot of these new chips in a smaller temperature range. You can't let them get as hot. And the reason for that is a lot of the advanced processing technologies that are used, actually, you know, you have to worry about different dyes and stuff and like how thermal expansion works. So you actually have a lower T case. And because of that, you actually need to keep these things, not just not just removing the same amount of heat and allowing, you know, a same temperature range as the previous gen, but you 
a lot of times have a smaller temperature range and you have to remove more heat, which is why liquid cooling is basically, everybody knows that this is gonna be inevitable for a lot of really high performance systems. And because you're gonna to have to have those smaller temperature ranges, you're also gonna to have to remove more heat. It also means that sometimes you're gonna need things like you're gonna need more flow. And so there's gonna be new sets of larger fittings and higher pressure fittings and stuff like that that you're gonna to have to have and components that you're gonna to have to have in these systems. And so those all need to get tested. And you can see that just by all these new generations of hardware coming out and the requirements of, you know, if you wanna have any density at all in your data center, well, at that point, you need to go and test all and prototype all of these new components to handle all of the new hotter systems. So as we've shown the evolution from that 40 kilowatt CDU up to like a megawatt scale CDU, and we've talked about some of the challenges in terms of next generation chips that are coming out and why these things are needed. I think this gives a good idea of at least why liquid cooling is going to happen. But I also wanted to show why it's important that companies like Cool IT are able to rapidly prototype, integrate, test, and really innovate on the liquid cooling of these next-gen systems because we're just getting more and more chips in servers, we're getting higher TDPs, there's just more and more power that's going into these new chips because it's the efficient way to go run your infrastructure and cooling really can't be the limit to that. So you need things like next-gen cooling systems from Cool IT, and that's exactly why this lab is super important going forward. And the last thing that anybody wants is to go and have to go deploy all these liquid cooling systems and then have one of these systems get struck by the L word. And you'll notice that we did not use the L word in this entire video because it's bad luck. And so I think after looking at the big one, that is a great place to conclude our tour of the liquid lab. Thank you so much for showing us around your lab. I really appreciate it. Yo, thank you very much for stopping by and enjoy the video. All right, at this point, you will notice that we did not use the L word, which is leak in this entire video because it's considered bad luck to say the word in the liquid lab. But that's exactly what this lab is really designed to go find and to make sure that they can reproduce situations where those leaks would happen in the lab so that they don't happen in the field. That's the entire purpose of this, or at least one of the big purposes of this entire lab. But it took a lot of effort to not say the L word all day because there were a bunch of times where I almost did it, but I had to catch myself. So I hope you enjoyed this look at the Cool IT Systems Liquid Lab. We're gonna have a lot more on the STH main site for liquid cooling in the near future because it is gonna be a big requirement of servers going forward. You also will probably have checked out our Gigabyte H262 ZL0 review where we actually saw this running and kind of went through that entire process. And hey, if you did like this video, well, why don't you give it a like, click subscribe, turn on those notifications so you can see it whenever we come out with great new videos. As always, thanks for watching. Have an awesome day. I think it's time for them to ship me home now. <laughs>